I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Today in the Gospel lesson, Jesus takes his disciples to the town of Caesarea Philippi where he asks them, who do people say that I am? That's a risky question for anyone to ask, isn't it? I mean, in general, you should never ask what other people have to think about you or say about you since you might not like the answer. And if it's true today for us, it was more than true for Jesus, and especially true because of where he asked it. The town of Caesarea Philippi was sort of the Vegas of religion in its day, a whole city of entertainment and distractions that was built around hedging your bets spiritually, of covering all your bases, of betting on both red and black when it came to faith. The city was chock-a-block full of different temples to all the different gods and goddesses, especially the fun ones. If you were ready to relax and let your hair down, you could go and offer a toast to the god of wine and the god of other things. You know the old saying, what happens in Caesarea Philippi stays in Caesarea Philippi. But at the center of the city, where you can still visit today, is a giant stone cave, a giant pit, which was called the entrance to hell, the gates of death, where after all the fun was over, everyone, in a way, eventually ended up never to come out. Now today we're so advanced, luckily, that we don't build temples anymore, or at least we don't think we do. Since we don't build cathedrals anymore, instead our biggest and most beautiful buildings are now all dedicated to the things we really worship. Think about the biggest buildings in most towns or the places that draw the most crowds, then you can work out what we actually pray to. I know I go and worship in the blue and yellow temple down on Long Wharf that serves the Swedish meatballs a little too often. But our problem is not our buildings, our problem is in our hearts. As Martin Luther once said, whatever you fear, whatever you love, whatever you put your trust in, that is your God. That is who you worship. And we'll put our trust in just about anything, myself included. We'll trust in anything if it promises to at least distract us a little while from that mouth of death that waits open for all of us. So it is in the middle of all of this, all of this choice, all of these options, all of these answers, that Jesus asks his disciples a key question this morning. He asks them about himself. Who do people say that I am? And they answer with confusion. Some say this, some say that. But today we are just as confused. Some people say Jesus was a good teacher, a wise, ethical person, but nothing more. Some say he is a fire and brimstone condemning judge, so you better watch out. Some say Jesus never was in the first place, or at least isn't anymore, so don't worry about it. But then Jesus makes it personal. Jesus always makes it personal, wants to get personal with us, and asks, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say? This is the million dollar question. This is where it all stands or falls. Who do you say that he is? And in a total miracle, Peter, who always puts his foot in his mouth, who never has the right answer, who will betray Jesus three times before the cock crows, Peter answers, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. And every word is perfect. You, Jesus, are right now and always the Christ, the Lord, 
and you are the only son of the only God who is truly alive. But if we were going to translate this for us, Peter really says, you, Jesus, are the answer. Jesus is the answer. Someone has told me that in Manila, in the Philippines, there is a giant church with a kind of Hollywood-style sign on the top that says, Jesus is the answer. I've been kind of waiting to ask the church council if we can have one of those built on our roof, too. But that's what it means to confess Jesus Christ is Lord. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's to say, you are the answer, Lord. You are the answer. You are the point. You are it. Not he might be, or sometimes, or only just for me, but rather he is the answer. Not always the answer we want to hear. Not always the answer that immediately fixes everything or spares us from suffering. But wherever we hear his word and confess back that he is the one, that he is it, that he is the answer, then there is a church, then there is a Christian, then there is faith, and faith changes everything. But where does faith come from? How do we get this faith that Peter had? Jesus is clear about that also today. Blessed are you, Simon. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. I know what you're like but my Father in heaven. Faith doesn't come from us. Our flesh and blood can't do it. But faith comes as a gift, as a free gift from God, by grace alone, so that we too can say, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief, but I believe. Some of you will have heard the tragic story about James Foley this week, the American journalist who was killed by the Islamic State in Iraq. It turned out that he was a friend of a high school friend of mine, and this friend sent me some words that Foley had written a couple years ago about how he got through a previous kidnapping in Libya. It turns out Foley was raised in New Hampshire as a very faithful Christian, he said, while I was kidnapped, I had nothing to do, and so at divine prompting, I made the decision to pray the Apostles' Creed anew every day. And for the first time, I really began thinking about what I was saying. I was consenting to every part of it. Yes, I believe in God the Father. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son. Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And a remarkable thing happened, he said. I could feel my connection to Christ and his church strengthen. That I was being conformed, shaped to God's yes, which sustains all of creation. And I found consolation and peace and an utterly new confidence in my faith. Yes, I believe was my go-to prayer in times of stress for all the little martyrdoms of life. Yes, I believed, I imagined, in the dentist chair or the emergency room. Yes, I believe, as I prepared for what is ahead of all of us. I believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So I know that in James' last moments this week, that's what he was praying. Just like Peter, just like us, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, you are the Son of the living God, and that you are the answer even to this. Jesus promises us that wherever we confess he is the answer, that whenever we say yes to his yes to us, then there is faith. And on that rock, he will build his church. You are Peter, which means rocky. You are rocky, and on you, rocky, on this rock, I will build my church. 
where we believe as a gift Jesus promises to build his church on the solid rock of faith in him. He will build it. He will strengthen it. He will make it grow on this rock. I will build my church and not even the gates of death and hell will be able to prevail against us. Because death doesn't get the last word for we who believe. Death becomes not the end, but the beginning. Death is not the curtain going down, but the curtain going up. Death has no final power over us because of him who was laid in a cold stone tomb and then came out of it again. Because on the cross he beat our death. He vanquished it. He emptied it. By his death he killed death. And so wherever we point to him saying, I believe, then the doors open up to eternal life. For Jesus has given his church the keys to his kingdom, the power to unlock the guilt and sin in each other's lives, saying, you are forgiven. He is the son of the living God and you are loved. He has said yes to you. You are forgiven given us the keys to open the gates to eternal life and to keep them open for you and me and for all who believe. So once more today together we confess, Lord I believe that you are the answer. And where that happens that is the rock on which Christ builds his church. He builds us up together on the rock of faith, on the rock of himself. We who are born out of that stone font, we who know we will live because the stone tomb is empty, and so even the gates of hell, even the gates of death will never prevail against us. For Lord, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, that you are the answer, and on this rock, build your church. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.